interesting. But that is neither here nor there. We are in week 23 of reading the Bible in a year. This is the screen share of my uh, this is the screen share of my Bible study book. Thank goodness for small favors. I can still do my screen share and everything. Let me give you guys the breakdown of this week. Week 23 is called Walk Wisely. Walk Wisely. And it starts off saying that David's son Absalom listened to the wrong advice and was killed by David's commander, Joab. Despite his son's treason, David greatly mourned Absalom's death. Let me see if I can come back and do something real quick. I know I'm all over the place here. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to make it as convenient as possible for people who do at least watch the replay. Where's that highlight button? Ah, oh, where's that highlight button? Oh, now even the highlight button disappeared. YouTube, you're making a fool of me. Oh, why is this a whole different layout? I'm supposed to be able to do a highlight, like a little a little chapter thing to show. Okay. As I was saying with the screen share, <laughs> let me just get on back. Let me just get on back. Week 23 is David's son Absalom listened to the wrong advice and was killed by David's commander, Joab. Despite his son's treason, David greatly mourned Absalom's death, even as he returned to Jerusalem to reestablish his reign. Chapter 22, a psalm. Uh, let's see. This refers to Psalms 18. Expresses David's strong faith throughout his lifetime. The last four chapters of 2 Samuel are not placed chrono chronologically. So that's something to be mindful of, you guys. When I start reading the last four chapters, things might seem a little out of whack because it is not in chronological order. Paul's letter to the Galatians, and Galatia was a region in what is now Turkey, countered the false teaching that salvation depends on keeping the Jewish law. Paul emphasized repeatedly in this letter that the truth of the gospel is salvation through faith in Jesus alone. He encourages and instructs believers to re rely on the Holy Spirit's power and guidance in order to in order to live in freedom and love. The book of Kings continues the story of the nation of Israel. Before he died, David had announced that God had chosen his son Solomon to be the next king and to build the temple. And that refers to 1 Chronicles 28, 5 through 6. When Solomon began his reign by asking God for wisdom, God gave him not only great wisdom, but great wealth and honor too. And these are the checkpoints for this week. Second Samuel, well, these are the, uh, excuse me, these are the readings that I'm going to be doing. Second Samuel 16 through 18, that's today. Second Samuel 19 through 21, that's tomorrow, Tuesday. Second Samuel 22 through 24 will be witness day. Come Thursday, I'll read Galatians 1 through 3. By Friday, I'll read Galatians 4 through 6. By Saturday, I'll be in the book of First Kings 1 through 3. And by Sunday, I will be in 1 Kings 4 through 6. And these are the checkpoints for this week. Tangled in a tree. Tangled in a tree. A thousand sacrifices. Two mothers. The cedars of Lebanon. The fruit of the spirit. Those are the checkpoints. Tangled in a tree. A thousand sacrifices. Two mothers the cedars of Lebanon, and the fruit of the spirit. And this is a small quote underneath by Priscilla Shearer. Priscilla Shearer, I do not know who she is, but she said, this is why he speaks in the Bible, to cause us to encounter him in a way that we otherwise might not have had the privilege of seeing or being a part of. And I think that he, that she is talking about is God. 
Reading the Bible is a way for us to know God in a way that we otherwise might not have the privilege. So that's interesting. Very interesting. All right, let me see. Let me get back to you guys here. Yep, I think I still got four in the room. No, I got six in the room. So somebody's here. All right, so we're back. <laughs> this is so awkward. You guys get to see me squirm. I'm like so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I feel like when I eat the lemon, it breaks up the mucus better than when I put it in my water. Mm. You know what? I am going to do one more thing. My grandmother likes to watch me. And she might not have the link. Now, she was able to find it yesterday because she got a link. But she she's not here now. And I wonder if it's because she, does, she didn't get the notification. So I'm going to say, good morning, dear grandmother, period. We are now live. And this is the link that you can find me, period. Hope that you can make it. All right. So now let's do a recap of yesterday. Yesterday would have been... Oh, I can't see anything. Yesterday would have been 13, 14, 15, right? So this is the recap from yesterday. Started off pretty, pretty sour with the rape of Tamar by her, one of her brothers or her brother's brother, Amnon. His obsessive love turned to hatred for her. And after the fact... Absalom Absalom the brother that that's his blood that's his you know full full sister right there Absalom was extremely angry Absalom plotted revenge against his brother Amnon It took him 2 years to do it I think wasn't it like 2 years later Yeah 2 years later he was able to arrange for uh, that part of the family to come over for some type of feast or whatever that was going on during the sheep shearing. Once they all got there, Absalom had his men kill Amnon. He fleed. Chapter 14, we got Joab. Joab arranges for Absalom's return. Of course, David, King David, allows him to come back, but he says, I don't even want to see him. He can come back to the kingdom, but I don't want to see him here. Absalom is quite upset with this. He's like, well, why did the king even let me come back if he really isn't letting me come back, you know, in, in his presence? But in verse 25 of chapter 14, Absalom, Absalom reconciled to David. In chapter 15... Absalom's rebellion. This is where uh, David's son is actually trying to come and dethrone him, and he succeeds. Now we are in chapter 16, 17, and 18, and it starts off talking about David and Ziba. Don't know who David and Ziba are, but let's find out. So, David and Ziba, when David had gone, Let's see, what's the very last part that happened yesterday? Okay, so in chapter 15, Amnon has just been... No, no, in chapter 15, David and his family, David and the kingdom, all the people in the kingdom, hear word that, hey, your son's about to come kick you out. There's about to be a, a coup, a coup d'etat. And David is fleeing him and his closest advisors and people that are around. So David is in the middle of going through the, 
the city streets and the, the citizens are watching the king leave and they're crying and weeping. And there's one person that's in the group that's like, hey, you're not even a part of our group. You are actually part of, you know, my son's group. You came here for some reason. I don't remember. What was it? It says something like, I remember it said something like, you you are a stranger among us. You came here for something. Here we go. Verse 32. I think. No, that wasn't it. Ah, verse 19. The king turned and said to Ittai, a leader of one of the men from Gath, why are you coming with us? Go back to King Absalom. For you are a guest in Israel, a foreigner in exile. You only arrived recently, and should I force you to wander with us? I don't even, I don't even know where we're going to go. Go on back, take your kinsmen with you, and may the Lord show you his unfailing love and faithfulness. So in either case, King David is leaving the kingdom, and now we're in chapter 16. When David had gone a little beyond the summit of Mount Olives, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, Ah, oh, remember Mephibosheth? He showed his kindness to one of the crippled sons of uh, Jonathan, or Jonathan's grandson, or Jonathan's son, was waiting there for him. He had two donkeys loaded with 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisins, 100 bunches of summer fruit, and wineskin full of wine. Erica, you made it! Hey, good morning! <laughs> that gives me hope. That gives me hope that I did not have to send out a specific link and somebody made it. Thank you. Thank you for showing up because it has been a rocky road. This, I'll tell you in a minute, but I'm happy to see you. I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, let's see. Chapter 16, verses, uh, verse 1. I'm still in verse 1. What are these for? The king asked Zeba. Zeba replied, the donkeys are for the king's people to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit are for the young men to eat. The wine is for those who become exhausted in the wilderness. And where is Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson? The king asked him. He stayed in Jerusalem, Zeba replied. He said, today I will get back the kingdom of my grandfather, Saul. That's kind of rude, isn't it? I mean, hmm. Verse 4, in that case, the king told Ziba, I give you everything Mephibosheth owns. I bow before you, Ziba replied. May I always be pleasing to you, my lord, the king. Okay, I got a little break in between here before there's something else happening. She may curses David. That's what's going to happen next. But, okay, Saul, y'all remember Saul. Saul was anointed to be the king. Saul lost favor with God because of his disobedience and some selfish ways. And, of course, some murderous ways. It turns out some jealousy. So, little by little, Saul lost favor. And David was anointed king. Once, was it the Philistines that were taken over? When, uh, yeah, I think it was the Philistines that was taken over. And that's when the nurse dropped the baby. And that was, you know, baby Mephibosheth. And they're trying to run for cover, take cover. Mephibosheth has been living off on his own all this time, wherever probably living, you know, not such a good life. And then David, out of the kindness of his own heart, takes Mephibosheth, brings him back into the kingdom and says, you can eat at my table. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to promise to take care of you. Just like I promised, I'm going to take care of you. So Mephibosheth has this beautiful grace. He's been blessed for no good reason other than the kindness of David's heart. And then he stayed behind once, what would that be? His uncle? I think that would be his uncle. His uncle Absalom says, oh, I'm going to oust my daddy and I'm going to take over the kingdom. And instead of going with David, you know, the person who basically kind of saved him and, and brought him back to life, he says in verse three, and where is Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, the king asked him. He stayed in Jerusalem, Ziba replied. He said, Today, I will get back the kingdom of my grandfather, Saul. 
I just think I, maybe I'm reading this the wrong way, but that seems a little ungrateful. On the one hand, yes, this is your your kin people. This is your your blood relations, but you've been saved by this person. That just that's a bold move. All right, now I'm going to go into verse five. This is Shimei. Shimei curses David. As King David came to Bahurim, a man came out of the village cursing him. Good grief. Now what? It was Shimei, son of Gera, from the same clan as Saul's family. He threw stones at the king and the king's officers and all the mighty warriors who surrounded him. Get out of here, you murderer, you scoundrel. He shouted at David. The Lord is paying you back for all the bloodshed in Saul's clan. You stole his throne, and now the Lord has given it to your son Absalom. At last, you will take some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Abishai, son of Zeruiah, demanded. Let me go over there and cut off his head. No, the king said. Who asked your opinion, you sons of Zeruiah? If the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Then David said to Abishai and to all his servants, my own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to do it. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. So David and his men continued down the road, and Shimei kept pace with them on a nearby hill, cursing as he went and throwing stones at David and tossing dust into the air. The king and all who were with him grew weary along the way, so they rested when they reached the Jordan River. What would you do in that situation? Because at this point, I'm feeling some kind of way. What What would you do in this situation? Like, even though David has really messed up with Bathsheba, you know, and, and Uriah, for the most part, he does tend to admit when he's wrong. And he does tend to, like, be really humble before even Jesus had the opportunity to say, if somebody slap you on the cheek, turn so they can slap you on the other cheek. David, at this point, he's had so many opportunities to to really, you know, lay it on people. And he's still being humble and still, you know, well, if that's what the Lord is telling him to say, I would have been like, sucker, I'm still, I'm still the king. I might be leaving under the rest, but I'm still the king. I mean, he could have used some type of power. He could have used some type of authority, but he didn't. But really, what do y'all what do y'all think about that? The fact that, and 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 just think that means all this time, all these years or whatever that David has been there, the the descendants and family of Saul have always been holding that bitterness inside. They never let it go, and they waited for this opportunity. So years and years, you're under this man's authority in the kingdom being ruled by him and they never really accepted him they never accepted him even though he was anointed to the point of they didn't accept him to the point that when this all happened they started throwing stones at the king that's pretty bold i mean even even when um there's an exchange of power between presidents even when there's an exchange of, of presidents, you know, one steps down and one goes and takes the oath and all that. People don't wild out like that, or do they? If they do, let me know. Let me know. But that is pretty crucial. And that is very, very humbling. You come from here, and then, oh my goodness, my son is trying to take over. And so he could have stayed and fought, but who really wants to fight their own child, right? He could have stayed and defended his he could have stayed and defended his throne. And he could have been like, I bet my son won't take my throne. Nope. Y'all ready? Ready. If my one if my son wanna come at me, let him come at me. But he acquiesced. He said, No. If this is what he wants to do, I'm gonna I don't want any bloodshed between me and my own child. I'm gonna leave. So many tough decisions. So many, so many emotional things going on and so many tough decisions. I just I want to feel bad for David because this is, this is the golden child. This is the, this is King David that everybody has fallen in love with all this time. Little shepherd boy, little shepherd boy, the hero, David and Goliath, you know, Dave, Saul killed 1,000, David killed 10,000. You know, he just keeps getting better and better and better and better and better and just, 
if he would only looked away when Bathsheba was out here taking her bath, if he would have only looked away, he would have probably rolled out his glory days, you know, on into the sunset. But at this point, it's like a decline, decline, decline. We got rape going on in his household. We got one brother killing another in his household. We got his son is trying is is coming to take over the kingdom. And then on his way out of the kingdom, we got people throwing rocks rocks at him and dust up in the air. You know, instead of saying kick rocks and eat my dust, they literally throw rocks and put dust up in the air. Man, what a sad, sad day for David. Okay, this is uh, verse 15. Ahithophel, Ahithophel advises Absalom. Ahithophel advises Absalom. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the army of Israel arrived at Jerusalem accompanied by Ahithophel. When David's friend Hushai the Archite arrived, he went immediately to see Absalom. Long live the king, he exclaimed. Long live the king. Is this the way you treat your friend David? Absalom asked him. Why aren't you with him? I'm here because I belong to the man who was chosen by the Lord and by all the men of Israel. Who shall reply, and anyway, why shouldn't I serve you? Just as I was your father's advisor, now I will be your advisor. Then Absalom turned to Ahithophel and asked him, oh, What should I do next? Ahithophel told him, Go and sleep with your father's concubines, for he has left them here to look after your place. Then all Israel will know that you have insulted your father beyond hope of reconciliation, and they will throw their support to you. So they set up a tent on the palace roof where everyone could see it. And Absalom went in and had sex with his father's concubines. Absalom fathered Ahithophel's advice, just as David had done. For every word Ahithophel spoke seemed as wise as though it had come directly from the mouth of God. Chapter 17. Now Ahithophel urged... Uh oh. Now Ahithophel urged Absalom, Let me choose 12,000 men to start out after David tonight. I will catch up with them while he is weary and discouraged. He and his troops will panic and everyone will run away. Then I will kill only the king and I will bring back, I will bring all the people back to you as a bride returns to her husband. After all, it is only one man's life that you seek. Then you will be at peace with all the people. This plan seemed good to Absalom and to all the elders of Israel. Verse 5, Hushai counters Ahithophel's advice. So Hushai is like his best friend, right? I'm getting confused with who these people are. Hushai. You know what? Since I'm right at the start of 17, I'm actually going to jump into my Bible dictionary because sometimes there's so many people go there's so many people interacting with each other that I get confused who is who. I wonder if I can find who Hushai is. Cuz I want to make sure I'm I'm understanding this right. Uh oh. I got my fan on this blowing my pages. Who is Hushai? Okay, Hushai, a friend and wise counselor of King David. Okay, so Hushai is a friend of King David and a, and a counselor of King David. During Absalom's revolt, Hushai remained faithful to David and became a spy for him in Jerusalem. He probably was the father of Baena, one of Solomon's 12 officers. Okay, so who is this Ahitala, Ahita? Ahi. Ah he ah he I know it when I see it. Ahikam? No. Ahimaza? No. Ahithophel. Yeah, that guy. Who is Ahithophel? One of David's counselors who assisted Absalom in his revolt. Okay, so they're in this thing together. When Absalom rebelled against David, Ahithophel apparently believed his own popularity would bring success to Absalom's revolt, possibly sensing a chance to rise 
to power himself. Ahithophel advised Absalom to take David's harem, an act equivalent to claiming the throne. Ahithophel also advised Absalom to pursue David, who had fled Jerusalem, but Absalom chose to listen to Hushai, who advised the prince not to pursue his father. Sensing that Absalom's rebellion was doomed, Ahithophel put his household in order and hanged himself. One of the few cases of suicide in the Bible. Okay. So they're kind of both doing the same thing, which is why it was confusing to me. Like, are you guys both here to help him? Are you here to, to um, or against him? Eva Frazier made it. Yay, we got one more person. Hooray. <laughs> I tried to make things as easy as possible. So I'm sorry for you guys who've had trouble making it in. Eva Frazier says, having big problems trying to tune in. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hopefully as time goes on, uh, maybe I will, the notifications will come through. And like somebody told me, and plus I couldn't find myself yesterday. I couldn't, I was tapping myself in. I know my name. I know the name I put on there. I couldn't even find myself. So thank you for trying. Thank you for making it. You did not miss much. Matter of fact, the majority of this live stream today has been very awkward, uncomfortable, un unorganized and, and messed up. Because <laughs> even on my side, things look differently. I'm going to show you guys real quick. You guys wouldn't know what it looks like anyways. But this is what this is what I'm looking at, right? See this white screen? This white screen is not how I usually conduct things. It, it doesn't, it's this totally different, right? What I'm used to seeing is something that looks like this. And it won't even let me go there, so... I can't, I can't conduct things the way I'm used to conducting it. It will usually be a lot more organized. It'll show me how my stream is doing and my analytics. And now it won't even let me come here unless it keeps asking me, do you want to set up a new one? No, I don't want to set up a new one. I want to manage what I'm already doing. And then it just keeps going back and forth, going back and forth. It's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah, so it's been really messed up on my side, too. And I probably just messed it up even more, did I? Okay, good. I'm back. Yeah, this whole little screen right here, I do not normally use this screen. I do not normally use this setup, and it's very confusing. It's hard for me to see really what's going on. And, yeah, so... We're all in this together. We're all uncomfortable, and it's probably aggravating for you guys, too. I hope it gets better from here. Maybe tomorrow, when I start up, I can, uh, now that I've established a live stream here, maybe when I come on tomorrow, I can do it like I usually do, because it'll be like, would you like to reuse your last settings? Well, yes. Yes, I would. And I just come on in, and it's fine. Hopefully, hopefully. But yeah, let me catch you guys up for anybody who just now came in. David is still on the run. King David is still on the run. You know, we had that uh, basically incestual thing going on yesterday with Tamar and Amnon. Absalom, the brother, killed Amnon for what he did to his sister. He fleed to the hills. After a while, David, you know, ban David banished him, but David allowed him to come back. The, uh, Absalom came back and then as of yesterday now King David is on the run because his son whom he allowed to come back is it's a coup it's a coup d'etat let me get some more of this lemon because I don't like all that sniffy 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 mm. so that was a recap from yesterday and at this point King David has been Leaving, leaving, leaving the city, he passed by some of Saul's people who was throwing rocks at him, throwing dust up in the air, basically, boo, boo, we didn't like you, no way. You stole the throne. You were never supposed to be there. Ha, now Saul's people is taken back. Well, now Saul's people, now your son is taking over. Maybe now you know how it feels to have the throne stolen right from under you. That's Saul's people. Mephibosheth, crippled Mephibosheth, who has been taken into the household, he says, I'm going to stay here. Ha! Now my people, I'm going to wait for my people to take the throne back. It's just a lot of drama and a lot of, uh, a lot of shade and a lot of hate going on. And right now at this point, 
I just finished up in chapter 17 where Hushai and what's his name? Ahi, 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 Ahithophel, that's his name. Ahithophel and Hushai are two of David's advisors that have stayed behind in an effort to either help Absalom or spy on him and kind of mess him up. So that's what we're trying to figure out right now. Ahithophel has just given Absalom advice. Well, your dad left behind these concubines, so you basically have a harem. You know, you go sleep with these girls that were left behind and you're basically claiming the household. Kind of like consummation. You're consummating your throne now. So go do this. And let's see what's happening now. Because that's pretty much where I left off right before you came in. Right before you came in, that's where I was at. Finally got in. I hit the like button. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I am so happy for the patient, patient and loyal people that I've got here because I know this is, this is very awkward. So thank you. Thank you for pressing the like button. And I hope that more of my YouTube friends can find me. So let's see. That was chapter 17, right? Chapter 17. Actually, I think I'm still in chapter 17. Yes. Chapter 17, verse 5, Hushai counters Ahithophel's advice. So we got these two advisors, Hushai. Every time I say that, I'm thinking of, it sounds like a Chinese name. I wonder if this person have Asian roots. This, doesn't it sound like Hushai, Hushan, or Hushai, something like that? And Ahithophel, that almost sounds like a Greek name. I mean, I've been reading some of these names long enough to kind of hear some patterns, but it sounds like these people have different different cultural backgrounds. Not that that has to do with anything. I'm just observing. But Hushai, advisor number one, counters Ahithophel's advice, advisor number two. Verse five, but then Absalom said, bring in Hushai the archite. Let's see what he thinks about this. When Hushai arrived, Absalom told him what Ahithophel had said. You know, go sleep with these concubines and you know, this is how you need to establish your power. Then he asked, what is your opinion? Should we follow Ahithophel's advice? If not, what do you suggest? Verse 7. Well, Hushai replied to Absalom, this time Ahithophel has made a mistake. You know your father and his men. They are mighty warriors. Right now, there is enraged as a mother bear who has been robbed of her cubs. And remember that your father is an experienced man of war. He won't be spending the night among his troops. He is probably already hidden in some pit or cave. And when he comes out and attacks and a few of your men fall, there will be panic among your troops and the word will spread that Absalom's men are being slaughtered. Then even the bravest soldiers, though they have won the heart of a lion, will be paralyzed with fear. For all Israel knows what a mighty warrior your father is and how courageous his men are. Ah, uh, so Ahithophel said, not only should you go sleep with these concubines, but go chase down your daddy and, and kill him and bring him, bring back the head. Cause they've been running and running and fleeing and getting out of town. They're probably tired. Send some of your strong young men after them and kill your daddy, but let everybody else come back to show, you know, what kind of king you are. But Hushai says, uh, 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 remember your daddy is a strong warrior. So let's see whose advice he takes. Verse 11, I recommend that you mobilize the entire army of Israel. Bring them from as far away as Dan in the north and Beersheba in the south. That way you will have an army as numerous as the sands on the seashore. And I advise that you personally lead the troops. When we find David, we'll fall on him like dew that falls on the ground. Neither him nor any of his men will be left alive. And if David were to escape into some town, you will have all Israel there at your command. Then we can take some ropes and drag the walls of the town into the nearest valley until every stone is torn down. Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, Hushai's advice is better than Ahithophel's, for the Lord is determined to defeat the council of Ahithophel, which really was a better plan, so that he could bring disaster on Absalom. And in verse 15, Hushai, you know, the guy who just was given advice to uh, Absalom, Hushai 
<laughs> warns David to escape. Hushai told Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, what Ahithophel had said to Absalom and the elders of Israel and what he himself had advised and said. Quick, he told them, find David and urge him not to stay at the shallows of the Jordan River tonight. He must go across at once in the wilderness beyond. Otherwise, he will die and his entire army with him. Jonathan and Ahimaaz, this is a different Jonathan now. Jonathan and Ahimaaz had been staying at Enrogel, so as not to be seen entering and leaving the city. Arrangements had been made for a servant girl to bring them the message that they were to take to David, King David. But a boy spotted them at Enrogel, and he told Absalom about it. So they quickly escaped at Bahurim, where a man hid them down inside a well in his courtyard. The man's wife put a cloth over the top of the well and scattered grain on it to dry in the sun, so no one suspected they were there. When Absalom's men arrived, they asked, Have you seen Ahimaaz and Jonathan? The women replied, They were here, but they crossed over the brook. Absalom's men looked for them without success and returned to Jerusalem. Then the two men crawled out of the well and hurried on to King David. Quick, they told him, cross the Jordan tonight. And they told him how Ahithophel had advised that he, advised that he be captured and killed. So David and all the people with him went across the Jordan River during the night, and they were all on the other bank before dawn. When Ahithophel realized that his advice had not been followed, he saddled his donkey, went to his hometown, set his affairs in order, and hanged himself. He died there and was buried in the family tomb. David soon arrived at Mahanaim. By now, Absalom had mobilized the entire army of Israel and was leading his troops across the Jordan River. Absalom had appointed Amasa. It's a lot of A names. Absalom had appointed Amasa as commander of his army, replacing Joab, who had been commander uh, under David. Amasa was Joab's cousin, and his father was Jether, an Ishmaelite. His mother, Abigail, daughter of Nahash, was the sister of Joab's mother, Zeruiah. Absalom and the Israelite army set up camp in the land of Gilead. Let me go back and make sure what I'm reading. Okay, so 18 is the last. 18 is the last. Verse 27, when David arrived at Mahanaim, he was warmly greeted by Shobi, son of Nahash, who came from Rabbah of the Ammonites, and by Makir, son of Amio, from Lodabar, and by Barzillai of Gilead from Rosalem. They brought sleeping mats, cooking pots, serving bowls, wheat and barley flour, and roasted grain, beans, lentils, honey, butter, sheep, goats, and cheese for David and those who were with him. For they said, You must all be very hungry and tired and thirsty after your long march through the wilderness. That was nice. At least they got some kind of some kind of respect. Let me check in with the chat to make sure I don't miss anything. All right. Any questions so far, you guys? You guys all right? You guys finally getting settled in now that you find found me? Chapter 18 is coming up very shortly, and it is the last chapter for today. And I do believe when I come out tomorrow, it'll be easier. Because I should be able to just come on to live and it will ask me, do I want to pick up where I left off, basically. And it should let me be able to do it. But today, it was terrible getting on here. Nobody said change was going to be easy. And nobody said change was going to feel good. But it was necessary. It really does cut the mucus down.
A lemon a day keeps the mucus away. All right. Nicole says, listening. Good. Whew. And I appreciate that. I need that. I need that. I need <laughs> I need feedback because it's not always easy being on the side of the camera reading. Chapter 18, Absalom's defeat and death. David now mustered the men who were with him and appointed generals and captains to lead them. He sent the troops out in three groups, placing one group under Joab, one under Joab's brother, Abishai, son of Zeruiah, and one under Ittai, the man from Gath. The king told his troops, I'm going out with you. But his men objected strongly. You must not go, they urged. If we have to turn and run, and even if half of us die, it will make no difference to Absalom's troops. They will be looking only for you. You are worth 10,000 of us. And it is better that you stay here in the town and send help if we need it. That sounds kind of like a checkpoint. Is that a checkpoint? No, that is not a checkpoint. If you think that's the best plan, I'll do it, the king answered. So he stood alongside the gate of the town as all the troops marched out in groups of hundreds and of thousands. And the king gave his command to Joab, Abishai, and Atai. For my sake, deal gently with young Absalom. And all the troops heard the king give this order to his commanders. So the battle began in the forest of Ephraim. And the Israelite troops were beaten back by David's men. There was a great slaughter that day. And 20,000 men laid down their lives. The battle raged all across the countryside, and more men died because of the forest than were killed by the sword. Really? During the battle, Absalom happened to come upon some of David's men. He tried to escape on his mule, but as he rode beneath the thick branches of a great tree, his hair got caught in a tree. It is a checkpoint. Let me start that over. This is chapter 18, verses 9. During the battle, Absalom happened to come upon some of David's men. He tried to escape on his mule, but as he rode beneath the thick branches of a great tree, his hair got caught in the tree. His mule kept going and left him dangling in the air. One of David's men saw what had happened and told Joab, I saw Absalom dangling from a great tree. What? Joab demanded, you saw him there and didn't kill him? I would have rewarded you with ten pieces of silver and a hero's belt. I would not kill the king's son even for a thousand pieces of silver, the man replied to Joab. We all heard the king say to you and Abishai and Ittai, for my sake, please spare young Absalom. And if I had betrayed the king by killing his son, and the king would certainly find out who did it, you yourself would be the first to abandon me. Enough of this nonsense, Joab said. Then he took three daggers and plunged them into Absalom's heart as he dangled, still alive, in the great tree. Ten of Joab's young armor bearers then surrounded Absalom and killed him. Then Joab blew the ram's horn and his men returned from chasing the army of Israel. They threw Absalom's body into a deep pit in the forest and piled a great heap of stones over it, and all Israel fled to their homes. During this time, Absalom had built a monument to himself in the king's valley, for he said, I have no son to carry on my name. He named the monument after himself, and it is known as Absalom's monument to this day. Verse 19, David mourns Absalom's death. So he's had one son die, that was Amnon. And now another son has died, Absalom. Can't forget about the, the baby, the first baby that uh that died with Bathsheba. So his, his children are just dying left and right. Then Zadok, son, Zadok's son, Ahimez said, let me run to the king with the good news that the Lord has rescued him from his enemies. No, Joab told him, it wouldn't be good news to the king that his son is dead. You can be my messenger another time, but not today. Then Joab said to a man from Ethiopia, Go tell the king what you've seen. The man bowed and ran off. But Ahimez continued to plead, plead with Joab. Whatever happens, please let me go too. Why should you go, my son? Joab replied. There will be no reward for your news. Yes, but let me go anyway, he begged. Joab finally said, All right, go ahead. 
So Ahimaaz took the less demanding route by way of the plain and ran to Mahanaim ahead of the Ethiopian. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates of the town, the watchman climbed the roof of the gateway by the wall. As he looked, he saw a lone man running toward them. He shouted the news down to David, and the king replied, If he's alone, he has good news. As the messenger came closer, the watchman saw another man running toward them. He shouted, Here comes another one. The king replied, He also will have good news. The first man runs like the Ahimea, son of Zadok, the watchman said. He's a good man and comes with good news, the king replied. Then Ahimaaz cried out to the king, Everything is all right. He bowed before the king with his face to the ground and said, Praise to the Lord your God who has handed over the rebels who dared to stand against my lord the king. What about young Absalom, the king demanded. Is he all right? Ahimaaz replied, When Joab told me to come, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't know what was happening. Wait here, the king told him. So Ahimaaz stepped aside. Then the man from Ethiopia arrived and said, I have good news for my lord, the king. Today the Lord has rescued you from all those who rebelled against you. What about young Absalom, the king demanded. Is he all right? And the Ethiopian replied, May all of your enemies, my lord, the king, both now and in the future, share the fate of that young man. The king was overcome with emotion. He went up to the room over the gateway and burst into tears. And as he went, he cried, Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And that has been the reading for today. That is 2 Samuel chapter 16, 17, and 18. I am definitely going to be editing this particular version just because it was so much confusion with me coming on and a lot of uh, dead space that it, it really should be trimmed up. So yes, thank you for your patience. Thank you for the people who worked a little harder than they probably should have <laughs> to make it here. I appreciate that. Uh, yes. So this is going to be where I'm going to be doing my Bible readings every morning, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, I will continue to read the Bible every day because that's my New Year's resolution. And so far, I think that's the one, that's the top one that I've been doing pretty well. And I'm very proud of myself for that. So, yeah. Uh, the way it says mules are slow. <laughs> They're slow, but uh, better for the mule to be tired than you to be tired. Because I'm just imagining, like, the distances between these different places. And, you know, you trot along. And the mules are getting tired, but you're not. Yeah, I guess they didn't have horses in this particular region yet, but... Ride like the wind. Uh, what what did Woody say from a uh, Toy Story? Ride like the wind. Um, bullseye. That was a mule, wasn't it? <laughs> you guys, thank you so much. I'm happy. I'm proud of myself for making it through this because it was very annoying not to have this part set up the way I wanted to. But I'm happy that you all made it. I'm happy that I w was able to start off a new month, hold on, a new day, a new week, a new month on a new channel. So I did it. It wasn't easy, but hey, it happened. It only gets better. Every time I do it, it's going to get better. I have to believe that. I have to believe that. Yes. I don't think I've got an outro. Yeah, I don't think I've got an outro because the old outro had my old channel name on there. It doesn't make sense. Maybe I'll make a new outro. Boulevard 40, Boulevard 40. <laughs> Thanks for watching. It doesn't rhyme with drive because I was really clever when I came up with that. Entrepreneur Drive. Thanks for watching. Share, like, and subscribe. I was like, oh, that rhymes. I'll come up with something. I'm pretty creative. Cheesy, but creative. So I'll come up with some new outro and, and that'll be that. So thank you guys. Um, quick outro prayer, Lord, thank you for today. Even though I was frustrated, 
I am not going to focus on the parts that were frustrating. I am not going to focus on the parts that made me uncomfortable. I'm not going to focus on the parts that aggravated me. I'm going to focus on the fact that I was able to read my Bible as usual in the comfort and safety of my own home. I was able to get online. I was able to reach out to some friends, not all friends, and that is enough for me. I was able to get my message across and I was able to make it through and yeah, and it was a great, it was a great, it was as good as it could have been. And for that, I'm grateful. That's all I'm going to say. It was as good as it could have been. And for that, I'm grateful. Uh, I pray that anyone who listens to any of these Bible readings is encouraged to read just a little bit of the Bible on their own time so they can come to their own understanding build up their own faith and build up their own relationship with you that is my prayer amen and on that note i will see you guys kenya congratulations on your new move thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you because this channel has a certain label it has certain descriptions that i put on the back certain tags i think that people looking for bible readings are going to be able to find me better now that was the whole purpose of it People who are looking for my other kind of videos are going to be able to find those better because it won't be mixed in with this. And All right. I try to hold back. I try to hold back, but it just, oh, sometimes I feel so congested. It's so annoying. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear it. And if I say the wrong word or the, the wrong sound comes out of my mouth, it, it gets stuck. It hits that wall. I know that's like TMI. But yeah, thank you so much for the congratulations. It was a strategic move. Uh, it's, it was more comfortable for me to stay in one spot. But sometimes, like they say, when, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. And in order to really be successful, you have to be able to read, read, understand, analyze, and go with the flow. And the way that YouTube flows, you almost have to be talking about the same thing consistently for them to promote you. If you're talking about shoes, you better always be talking about shoes. You, you start talking about boots and then you start talking about sandals and then you start talking about something else. And it just, it makes the, it makes YouTube go like, Oh, we don't know how to suggest you. If you, you know, start, if you're doing vlogs and then all of a sudden you start doing how to videos even though it's still you, it's still a day in your life, YouTube will be like, oh, are you a vlogger? Or are you a how-to how DIY person? And they just start tripping. And I think that's why that's why a lot of people are not getting discovered. Well, at least people like me. People like me don't get discovered because we've got too many things going on. You, you have to go like super niche, which is difficult. It's, it's a challenge because one, people know what to expect when they come to your channel. But two, how many times can you talk about a shoe? Like how many, how often, how, how, there's only so much you can do with a certain topic. So that can be a challenge in itself. But hey, that's the life. That's the life. And that's what I signed up for. And so I'm ready for the challenge. I'm ready to knock it out the box. I, I can do this. I can do this. Yes. Tomorrow, excuse me, tomorrow morning, I will be here at 7 a.m. Central reading the Bible. And from time to time, probably at least once a week, I will be re uh, releasing business-related uh, content over on 40 Entrepreneur Drive. So in either case, thank you guys. See you on the next round. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow me on social media. Now, let me know what you think about this next upcoming video.